Hey everyone, this week's episode is all about the fifth principle in our series on Agile Org Transformation and that is that we must change the philosophy of measurement. So we've already talked about looking outside in from the customer's perspective. We've talked about embracing variation, about the fact that doing the work and improving the work is the work. And last week we talked a little bit about KPIs and performance measures and some of the weird behaviour that they can drive in your organisation and why you need to do that work to realign them. This week, we have to shift the philosophy of measurement. That is, we need to shift from measuring to understand achievement. Did we hit the number? If not, why not? To measuring to understand where to go next for improvement. And this one's big. This is a this is a big core shift because everything that we've been taught in our MBAs, all our postgrad work, um, everything that we've been taught in the office is all about understanding um, where those control points are in our organisation and did we hit them and if not, why not? It's it's the way that we're built and taught to inquire in our business. And what we need to do is to start to shift that dynamic up so that we can understand what it is that we need to measure that's truly important, that helps indicate to us whether or not we're actually going to land the right outcome for our customers, um, for our business performance, for all those sorts of things. And so I often talk about this idea of lagging and leading indicators. I promised to talk about that last week. Uh, so lagging indicators are those indicators where you look like you're driving the car whilst still having to look out the rear vision mirror. So it's it's not an indicator that gives you any indication of where we are going. It's simply a measurement that we take that helps us talk about where we've been. Most of the measures we use in our business are, um, will fall into this lagging measure category. So financial measures. You won't know our uh, financial position until the end of the month when we go through that process at month end and we and we land those numbers and we know exactly with certainty where we sit financially. It's a lagging measure. We've spent the money, but we don't actually know where we are until we get to that point that we do the the, the roundup. Uh, NPS, net promoter score, is another really often used uh, lagging measure. It's a scale on a scale of one to ten, how likely are you to recommend us? Well, this is a survey that's done at the end of the customer experience or the end of the purchase process for a product. Uh, and it's a score of 1 to 10. Um, there's no indication about why the customer gave us that score, um, what we could have done differently to, uh, to help that. Sometimes customers give us that information, but it's not inherently built into the metric, which is simply a score of 1 to 10. And that's the stuff that we see reported on those board reports, right? We see NPS of, um, you know, 0 to 100. So lagging measures are all around us and they're really easy to get caught up in, but unfortunately they don't help us understand where and predict our performance about where we're actually going to land. So a leading measure is something that we can measure now in the moment to know where we're likely going to land, what the predictable performance looks like, and it's something that we can often change in the moment to have some uh, some ability to influence the outcome as it's happening. And leading measures are really, really critical if you're moving to an environment where you're trying to lead your team through uh, vision and values as opposed to policy and procedure. Because you're not going to be there to make the decisions in the moment anymore. You need that team to be able to see what's going on and to be responsive and to start to steer the organizational performance as they go about it. So what does that look like? Well, uh, it looks like uh, an example of um, one of these leading metrics might be, did we deliver what mattered to customers? So it's a question that we can ask ourselves in the moment in any interaction with our customers. Is this delivering what truly matters to customers? And there's a couple of assumptions behind this too, right? It assumes that we understand who our target audience are, who our customers are, and we understand what's important to them. So there's work that's required to understand those things before we can authentically measure whether or not we're delivering that. And it's the type of measure that continues to evolve. So as we learn more about what matters to our customers, we're then able to adjust and flex and say, hey, we've learned something new, therefore our measure adjusts. So the best example I have of this is a colleague that I work with in a call center who used to measure in his call center a graph of did we deliver what mattered to customers as a percentage of the calls taken during the day. 
So his entire team, as they were sitting on phone calls, would take this measure. Did we live, deliver what mattered to customers? Yes or no? And at the end of the day, they would graph that as a percentage, and it was just a running line graph, so they could see what that percentage looked like on a day-to-day -day basis. And so, presented with this graph one morning, what happened was he could see a very high number, or a very high percentage of delivered what mattered to customers, and then about midweek, it dropped off a cliff, and we're talking a drop from in the order of 75 to 80%, dropping down to around the 20% mark. Like it was a significant off a cliff drop. And I remember this colleague saying to me, he said, every bone in my body wanted to just dive into understanding what happened, what's gone wrong, and just go into problem and, and, and solving problem mode. And he said, I held back and he said, help me understand. And what his team said to him was, We've been doing these phone calls, we've been delivering this product for a number of uh, months now, and what we discovered on Wednesday, the point that it dropped, was that there was this whole piece that was really important to customers that we didn't even know about. And so we realized that we'd been missing that for the past few months, but it was something that was really critical, and better yet, if we get it right, it actually should stop a whole bunch of phone calls further down the track where customers are calling us back and saying, hey, have you done this yet? And so we had to adjust our measure. And so what we did now is that based on that new understanding, we're now not delivering what matters to customers because we've got to work out how to do that. We can't necessarily just do it straight off the bat. We've got to work it into our process and that's going to take some time. And so that's the reason that the measures dropped. And so here was this amazing example of a leader who was able to hold space for that conversation and in the process learned that it was absolutely okay that the measure had gone the wrong way. And the reason that was okay was because we'd learned something in the process. So it was okay that we were only delivering what mattered to customers 20% of the time now versus 80% of the time last week. That was okay because we had learned something new about what was important to those customers and therefore we now had to work our way back up to that 80%. And this is at the core of this measurement conversation. It's the this idea that if we are understanding where to go next for improvement, it doesn't matter if the measure goes the wrong way, as long as we've learned something. If the measurement's bouncing around all over the place and we don't know why, and it's not predictable, that's a problem we need to dive into. But if that measure changes significantly in the wrong direction, and we've learned something as a result, that's a great outcome. And so the reason that this is one of the core principles that I teach when I talk about Agile Org Transformation is that it's a philosophical move that we have to make as leaders. And once we make that move, we start to redesign the whole way that we visualize information, the whole way that we report and measure, starts to shift our focus, it starts to shift our mindset, we influence our peers in a different way, we gain insight that we didn't see before, and it actually simply opens the door for more conversations rather than shutting those conversations down, which all too often, when you're presented with a number and the number's not where it needs to be, it becomes a very reductionist conversation. Getting into that brainstorming mode is really hard. When you approach the philosophy of measurement around understanding where to go next for improvement, you're opening doors. So that was what I wanted to share with you this week. Uh, I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day, and I would love to hear from you, so drop me a comment below or hit me up on email. Um, have a great day. We'll see you next time. Thanks.